Hey, crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I know you've heard of Secret Santa, but have you ever heard of a Secret Rudolph? Today's card is actually a really fun little light up card, and it starts out looking like a regular reindeer, but when you press the button, his nose turns red and he becomes Rudolph. Secret Rudolph. <laughs> Today's card is part of our August Power Pack blog hop. I hope that you will hop along with us. There are some fantastic cards that are all light up and they all feature the power packs inside. So hop along with us and enter for your chance to win a power pack kit of your own. If you're unfamiliar with the power pack kit, well, the power pack itself is a battery pack and it has a switch. So it makes making light up cards very easy. The kit actually has three lights and some copper tape in there so that you can make three light up cards. If you already have your own Chibitronics, you can buy the power pack separately. Um, we offer them in singles, three packs, and even a, a big bulk 20 pack if you wanna make a lot. We also sell the copper tape separately on our website. And speaking of Chibitronics, you know that they come in white, but did you also know that they come in lots of other colors? The tropical set, and then also the uh, original color set has the primary colors in there. They are a ton of fun. Um, for today's card, I'm gonna use a red light, our power pack, and my copper tape, obviously. Um, so I'll show you how to make that in just a second. And for the card base itself, um, I'll walk you through the different parts. I've already gone ahead and cut them out. I've got an A2 size card base, and then I've got a little gray piece of cardstock that's cut down an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around. I've grabbed a red A6 size envelope from my stash just because that's the only red envelope I had. You can use a, an A2 set as well. My dies are all um, from Mama Elephant, or this, this set is actually um, the Snow Deer set, and it's a, a few years old. I don't know about you, but when I start seeing the Christmas in July stuff come out, it makes me think of all the sets that I've bought in previous years and didn't get a chance to use. <laughs> it's not going to stop me from buying new sets, of course, but um, if I use some of the older sets before, then I won't feel so guilty. So today I pulled out this fun Mama Elephant uh, Snow Deer set, and I die cut all of my little bits and pieces. That fun little bow tie is actually cut four times and stacked together. And then for the nose, this is this is my tricky part here. This is cut out of beige cardstock here. And then I'm going to make it turn red with one of these red lights. So now you could cut it out yourself um, with red paper and then just put a white light under it. That would be fine. But I, I wanted him to be Rudolph in disguise. For the eyes, uh, the set actually comes with these fun little U-shaped eyes, but I wanted more of a tic-tac shape, so I just grabbed um, another set of eyes from the cat set. Um, I'll have links down below for everything, uh, and that's going to make my re reindeer face here. The sentiment is a hero art set. It's got um, the word Mary that's a die cut, and I've already cut and stacked that four times, and then I'll stamp out my words on the the gray cardstock there and emboss them and i'm also going to add a little bit of snowy texture with this little set or i'm sorry this little stamp it's an old stamp it's from close to my heart back when they were still called dots um, so i don't have links to that but any snowy background will work you could even flick on some white paint so when my pieces are all cut out, the next thing I'm going to do, or the first thing that I'm going to do here really, is to stamp out the sentiment. And I went ahead and I lined up the die cuts in place there just so that I knew um, the spacing. And then I've got um, some Versamark ink. This is clear sticky ink. And I've gone ahead and uh, prepped the, the cardstock with a powder tool just so that no extra bits of embossing powder would stick to it when I stamp it. So I'll stamp it and then I'll go ahead and sprinkle on the white embossing powder there. And then I can heat that with my heat gun here and that'll give me a nice raised sentiment. And then I wanna stamp on that snowy background. I didn't treat the rest of the paper with a powder tool. You can if you want. I'm not worried about it because extra little bits of embossing powder will just add to the snowy background here. 
So I'm just going to quickly stamp that all around the place. If you have a larger background stamp, you could use that. And like I said, you could even flick on some white paint if you want. Just be careful not to cover up your words. Uh, you want to make sure that they're still legible. So I'll sprinkle on a little bit more embossing powder here. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the edge of that stamp, I actually got a little bit of ink too close to the edge and, and got it on the side. So I do have a couple little straight lines instead of just dots everywhere. So I can fix that in a second with a paintbrush I'll show you here. And flicking off any extra powder before I do that. And I don't have to worry about making it perfect at all because again, it's just a snowy background. Then I can go ahead and heat this up with my heat gun too. And then our background will be all finished. We're actually gonna build our circuit on that gray background. Um, I want it to to sit underneath the little head here. Um, so I'm going to line up the pieces and I want to make sure that the battery, the power pack portion actually fits underneath um, the muzzle. And then you can see the Chibitronics, the cluster here has um, three different lights on it. The, they are marked with an R, a Y, and a B. That's for red, yellow, and blue. I'm just going to use the one red light here. But for now, I'm just kind of spacing everything out and making sure that it all fits. So I'll place my muzzle on top, and then I'll test it out with the nose above it, and I see that it all fits there. Um, a little bit of the top of the power pack was peeking out, so I am going to go ahead and I will trace the... Um, the power pack onto the head just so that I can um, cut out a little notch here. And I'm only cutting up to the top of the battery enclosure. I want to make sure that I don't cut too high or I'll go above where the muzzle sits and that's not good. So I'll go ahead and get that trimmed out and then I'll test it here. You see the, the power pack can tuck right underneath it there. Um, I didn't cut it quite high enough. So I'm gonna just trim it up a little bit more, make that channel a little bit taller. But again, being careful not to cut too high or it would show. Now that I know that that works, I can go ahead and figure out where on the cardstock that I want the head and the power pack to actually be stuck down. Um, so I'm going to bring back in those antlers real quick and that bow tie just so that I can line it all up and make sure that I'm going to glue them in the right place. Once I figure out the spacing for them, I'll take my pencil and then I'm just going to go ahead and trace the notches inside the uh, head there where I, I cut out that little channel. I'll trace around that and then I'm going to trace around the power pack as well and that will help me line it back up when I pick them up to um, put glue on the back. Um, and I actually need to run the, the circuit before I glue the head down. But I want to go ahead and trace around the power pack as well. And I have those registration marks so I know that I can glue it back in place. And I'm also marking the plus and minus that are on the power pack. That's the positive and negative side. Um, there's a positive and negative side on the light as well. And so we're just going to connect the, the two sides together. Now I grab my red light and I am tucking it right underneath the power pack there because I want that light just unfortunately it's really close so it, it's going to go right at the top there then i can put the head back in place and just kind of scratch it a little bit with my fingernail so that that marks where the led sticks up and then i can grab my tiny little 16th inch hole punch here and i cut out 
a little hole just big enough for the LED to kind of poke through a little bit there. And I'm testing it, making sure that it actually lines up and I can glue it all back down where I wanted it. And that works. And then I'm also going to mark the plus and minus here just so that I'm making sure that I'm going to run the negative to negative and positive to positive. Uh, normally I would go ahead and stick the power pack down at the same time as my light before I start running copper tape, but because the, the, the light is so close to the power pack, I'm actually going to lay the copper tape down on that um, bottom pad there first. And you saw me wipe away those pads, uh, you saw me wipe those pads actually, with a little microfiber cloth. I just want to get any oils or fingerprints that may have um, transferred to the stickers um, off before I add any copper tape on top. You want to make sure that your copper tape, wherever it touches itself or um, the pads, has a nice clean connection. Any contamination underneath there can cause a flaky circuit. And this copper tape does have conductive adhesive. That means that you can tear it and stick it to itself um, rather than folding it. You can fold it as well. In fact, I often do. But the, um, the electricity will flow through um, one piece into another as long as you don't have contaminants or too much resistance in between. So I've gone ahead and I created kind of an upside down L shape on the right side and then I started to run the, um, the other side, the negative side over there. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick my power pack down before I go any further. And I was just showing you that there's white silk screening over the power pack or on the back of the power pack there. As long as the uh, copper tape underneath is not touching any of the silver pads, just the white part. It's totally fine. It's not going to run through there and create a short. So I can go ahead and stick it right on top of the, the pad on that LED like that, and it's not going to cause any problem. So now I've gone ahead and I have stuck the power pack down with strong super tape from ThermaWeb. I like that. And then I will go ahead and connect the rest of the negative side together. Again, I wipe the pads down and the copper tape so that I, I'm not transferring um, any oils or anything underneath there. And did you notice that I'm, I'm being careful not to touch the bottom of the copper tape where it's gonna stick to anything else so that I don't get fingerprints or oils on the, um, the underside of my copper tape either. And I've gone ahead and completed the positive side now so I've got a complete circuit and I want to make sure, actually I need to test it, make sure that it works and it does. And then I want to make sure that none of that tape is sticking out underneath the head. And it was just a little bit, so I'll just kind of scrunch it back with my fingernail. No problem. And now that the circuit is done, we can go ahead and glue the rest of the card together. Now it gets really quick and easy. So I'm gonna use my PVA glue. I've got it in a fine line bottle just because that's easiest for me um, to control how much glue comes out. And I will glue the gray card front to the card base. And then I can come in and glue down the antlers. They're gonna go underneath the head. So I'll glue those down first, tucking them underneath. And then I can glue the head down as well. And for the muzzle, I'm actually gonna pop it up with some foam tape. But before I do that, I wanna glue the nose in place. So that little nose has a, a tiny little line that comes down and I want the nose to stick up above the muzzle. So I'm only gonna connect the two pieces just at that tiny little line. And tweezers help to hold tiny little pieces like that and get them in place. Isn't it fun how his nose turns red? Secret Rudolph. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and glue my eyes down flat as well. 
If I'm um, applying glue and I get a little too much on there, instead of just letting it seep out, I try to dab it off on my finger first. Now here's a cool trick for that nose. I wanna pop it up with some foam tape, but regular foam tape you can't see through. So I've got this cool tack, which is basically clear foam. And it is the same thickness as regular foam tape. It's a 16th of an inch thick. So I'm gonna double it up and stack it up on the nose. And then the light will shine right through both of those layers of that clear foam. Now for the rest of the muzzle, I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, foam tape, just regular foam tape, and I'm doubling it up. I wanna to get to the same thickness as the power pack, and the power pack is about as thick as a double layer of foam tape. I don't need any in the middle. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some on the outside edges. Um, the the middle is going to be popped up by the battery and the, the button down there. So no worries there. You'll have plenty of support. And you don't need to go crazy with a foam tape. Once I get this in place, um, I'm going to show you another trick. I've had people ask me, how do you mail light up cards so that the battery doesn't go dead? Because if you've got it in the mail and the the button is accidentally pushed while it's in transit, you can run down the battery. So I've just taken a scrap of cardstock and I wrote remove before use on it. Um, you can even use the clear acetate that comes in the packaging. That's fine too. Um, it's just easier to write on the paper so that's why I use that. And then I can stick it underneath the battery. I pop the battery out, stuck the paper in, then put the battery back in place. That will disrupt the circuit so it can't run the battery down. Now before I actually stick those pieces in place, I do want to make sure that I'm not going to catch that paper with the foam tape, otherwise you won't be able to remove it, so be careful of that. And then I can go ahead and stick it in place, and then it's just a little bit of decorating left, and he's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down the bow tie and the word Mary. Um, like I said, those are stacked up. I cut out three pieces of red cardstock and then the top layer is just a scrap of um, patterned paper that was in my stash and glued those together. And then the last thing I'm going to do to finish up this card is write the word push over the button and add a few little shiny red gems. These are Max Red from Ink Road Stamps. I love these. I use these all the time actually. <laughs> One of my favorite embellishments and named after my friend Antonius Maximus. You might be familiar with him. So once I get those glued down, that will finish up my card. I have got links to all the products that I used on my blog. And I've also got links to all of the awesome designers that have some fantastic light up cards they're going to share with you this month. Remember that today's video is part of our monthly power pack hop. This is August. So make sure that you hop along with us and comment for your chance to win a power pack kit of your own. All of the details are on my blog. And then also, I want to mention that we've got a brand new Facebook group called Interactive Cards and Paper Crafts. If you're on Facebook at all and you want to share any of your interactive cards, they don't have to be light-up cards. They can be any kind of fun folds or any types of interactive cards. Go ahead and share them with us. And also, if you are making a light-up card or any other kind of interactive card and you get stuck, go ahead and drop some pictures in there and ask questions. There's some great crafters in there that would be happy to help. Check that out. I've got links to that down below, too. And I've got links to a few more light-up cards. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, feel free to click that button and ring the bell. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.